Hi folks, uh, welcome to this special uh, Rangers review interview. I'm delighted to say we're joined by former Rangers midfielder Robbie Crawford, uh, now playing over in the States for Monterey Bay. Robbie, how are we getting on? Oh, good, thanks. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no, it's it's great to have you on. Um, really interesting in, in hearing how you're, how you're getting on over there uh, in, in America, of course. Um, before we do that, Robbie, you spent... Fit God and I on 15 years at Rangers, a, a good amount of time of your life. You joined, am I right in thinking, as, as an eight-year-old? Um, how did how did the move come about? That's right, yeah. Um, I was just training with local local team, like like you do at eight. You don't really take it too seriously, just having fun and enjoying yeah. training a lot. And um, got a letter through the door. Mum showed me it, told me all about it, and said I was training the next week, and... Yeah, I remember it really clearly, and that was the start of 15 years at the club, so it was um, a long time ago, a lot of memories, and uh, thankful a lot of positives to look back on. Yeah, definitely. Were you a Rangers fan as a, as a kid, Robbie? Um, honestly, like growing up in Gurk, I was more, my dad would take me to Martin, his local team, yeah. he had tickets, um, but then obviously at eight, such a young age, and then as soon as I was there, that was, that was me, and you know. Affection for the club on the group year by year, and um, definitely consider myself a fan now. Having spent all those yeah. years there, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And, but we always want when you played as a midfielder when, when they spotted you as, as a as a young boy. Is that the position you've always played? Yeah, I think centre mid's always kind of suited my style. Pretty yeah. um, two footed and low energy coming up and down, and just kind of always suited my game and. When I was eight, there wasn't an under eights, so I was training with under tens, and then I was playing year above myself and playing centre mid for all those years. And then it was more kind of under sixteens, under seventeens. It became pretty difficult to nail down the position. And that's when I yeah. played in a lot of different positions, which obviously helps in some ways. It shows that you're versatile, but at the same time, I always wanted to kind of nail down that spot. So yeah, um, yeah that's kind of part of my my reasoning for going abroad as well, just to kind of nail down that position and establish yeah. myself as a centre mid. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And when you joined as a young boy, I mean, I spoke to a lot of uh, boys that, that came through range and, and they say it took them a wee while to adjust to the demands, even at a very early age. How did you, can you remember how you found it going through the sort of ranks and growing up? Was it was it pretty demanding? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty brutal even at that age. You see guys yeah. getting cut or released at the end of the season, and it's um, it's tough for them. The families kind of build their identity around that and I've definitely been guilty of that in the past and it's um it's uh, yeah it's pretty brutal but I suppose it prepares you well for uh professional sport and and yeah. um I always kind of took to it I guess so obviously I managed to get through each each year and progress to the first team but um I was always pretty competitive and took it seriously and I guess it kind of kind of suited me in that sense but it's um yeah, it's, it's tough to see your teammates yeah. for a lot of years get being told they're they're no longer yeah. part of the club. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And did, did you did did you sort of do any of the, the sort of apprentice stuff that, that, that you hear boys doing? I mean, cleaning the boots and, and what have you. But it was you sort of catered for for when you were coming through the ranks? Um, I think there was probably a good balance when I was there. It was kind of yeah. towards the end of that whole culture, but at the same time, yeah. like. I'd clean a lot of the first team boots or the coaches and um, Billy Kirkwood was the part of the youth team. He was quite, not old school, it was just kind of good good habits yeah. that he learned growing up in, in that sort of era. So um, I, I feel like I got a good good mix of both being treated really well and also having having the dirty work to do as well. Yeah, 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 certainly. And did you mentioned there some of your pals obviously getting let go. It's, I mean, it's cutthroat football, we all, we all know it is, but... Was there any boys that, that, that you sort of started off that, that, that went on the just same journey as you, uh, Robbie, that made it all the way through? Um, I think from my age group, there was Kyle McCausland, who had a few yeah. games in the first team at one point. Um, mm. He joined at like under 14, so he was probably there the longest in terms of my age group. Obviously, Lewis McLeod had been there a long time, yeah. but he was a year younger than me. Uh -huh. um, Liam Kelly, the goalkeeper, uh, a couple of years younger, was there a long time as well, so... Uh, yeah. The McCrory's as well, they were kind of always around. So they were kind of the standout ones in terms of my sort of age group that, that um, progressed from the youth to the first team. 
Yeah, yeah. And yeah. When, you, when you were getting near the first team, Robbie, was was there a point, I've, I've done interviews before when boys maybe just get taken over for training, the, the first team might need a, an extra body. How, how, what was your sort of first uh, introduction, I guess, to, to the first team in terms of the training and all that sort of stuff? Um, again, remember it pretty clearly. I was under, seven, I think I was 17, playing like second year of the under 17s. And it's kind of in and out of the team. I was struggling even at at that point to get in the team and and then um Kenny McDowell came around from the first team just to watch and you know I felt like I always trained well and I thankfully had another good day when he was watching and then the next day I was I was training with the first team even though I was kind of struggling to get in the under 17s team at that point um and I just took to really well I just really enjoyed the professionalism and being at the level above and it was really technical and high demands you're kind of I was just, afraid to make mistakes really but it kind of yeah you just want to show yourself well and prove to everyone that you're good enough to be there and thankfully it, it went really well and then it became more of a regular thing and managed to get into the under 17s team and build from there and um that was kind of how it all started when when kenny came around to to watch that session yeah spot on and i mean the boys i spoke to sort of your age when they're coming through and when, when the administration thing happened in, in 2012 they, they seen it as a, an opportunity to um, get get a chance in the team when it wasn't necessarily there. Is that, is that how you felt at, at that point? I guess it must have been quite a, a surreal moment um, as a player coming through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, surreal is a good word and yeah. kind of mixed emotions because I'd been trained with the first team a lot leading up to that and then played in a friendly towards the end of that season before the administration in the summer. So I felt yeah. pretty confident in that summer going to the first team regardless like I was determined to have a good off season and come back ready to go and then um, everything happened and like I say mixed emotions being a fan of the club and so much uncertainty and um, there was there was so much going on but you know yeah. like I say you kind of have to make the most of difficult uh, circumstances and myself and Barry Mackay and Lewis and a couple of other younger guys just had no other option but to make the most of it and help the yeah, we were integrated straight into the first team over that summer and signed a long-term deal, and uh, that was kind of the start of the, the journey in, into the first team. Yeah, yeah. And did you guys uh, have any sort of dealings with guys behind the scenes at that point? I heard there was like lots of meetings going on, but, but were you sort of privy to that really just trying to, I guess it, it, when you're that age, it must be hard to sort of compute what's what, what's going on. You just, I guess you must have just been interested in playing for Rangers and getting on that park. Absolutely, that was kind of like I said. I spent like ten years getting to that point, so that was yeah. um, that was always the goal, just to to be there as a player and like say show that you're you're good enough and um, you know, like worthy of of being in the squad and um, all that happened. And like I said, I was kind of in the run first team, so I was in some of the the meetings that were going on and really experienced yeah. guys themselves were even confused. Never mind the young boys. So um, yeah, it was it was just a uh, pretty unique situation like nobody had experienced it before and such a massive club to be going through that it was it was pretty surreal yeah but your debut then Robbie can you remember much about it uh yeah it was a way to break in in the yeah. cup pre-season in July July time must have been yeah yeah so I think it was a bit more of a like wasn't as comfortable a day as most thought and went to extra time and whatnot but <laughs> yeah. we uh, <laughs> got the win in the end and it kind of yeah, that was just the start of things to come. It was, it was a new experience for everyone playing lower leagues and all those new mm -hmm. stadiums. And like I say, I think the fans just had to make the most of it, and they turned out the new that uh, in the way that we knew they would. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the start of it. Yeah, but, but I mean, I mean, just pl playing for the club and and having that fan support, not only at Ibrox, of course, with the packed the place out, but away from home when you're going to these tiny grounds and you're seeing them. Uh, following in, in the numbers, uh, what 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 is that like as a player to uh, to run in that park and, and perform for them? Um, again, it's it's mixed emotions when it's going well. It's it's amazing, and <laughs> yeah. you don't want to. <laughs> you never take the support for granted, but at the same time, you're not surprised when you see all these like all these thousands gathering at the small stadium. It's just it just became like the norm, and yeah. Um, like I say, don't want to take it for granted, but at the same time, that's just you knew it was that was going to be the case, and um, yeah, I was put high demands on myself, and maybe almost too much. It kind of tightened me up a little bit. I could have played with a bit more freedom at times, but 
it was just because you wanted to do so well and and impress and um obviously being at the club for so long you take it seriously and know what it means to them so you you're desperate to win and and do your best so um yeah a lot of a lot of mixed emotions but like i say lots of uh lots of highs to look back on yeah i think i think it was andy mother that said to me he said that it can be really it can be really hard to play they're so demanding the rangers fans it, it can be difficult and you need to sort of find an inner strength if you like to, to play sometimes is that what you found at sort of points like you say when you're saying that such a demanding support absolutely i mean rightly so they've got high expectations and massive club for years and yeah you know that helped us keep our standards high like they weren't going to drop theirs so yeah. um like i said i've been there for 10 11 12 years when i was in the first team and I, as i was breaking into the first team so i knew what it meant and um that definitely definitely plays on your mind but you, you know it's hard to perform at your best when you're worried about pleasing every single person in the crowd you just kind of have to accept at one point that you're going to make mistakes and that you you just need to react positively and, and still nice yeah. to perform somehow. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yep. And Ali McCoy, of course, was a manager at, at that point, Robbie. Um, what was it? What was it like to work with? I mean, for me, nothing but positives. He gave me a five-year deal for the first team and gave him a debut and um, understood understood the values of the club like like no one else and the fact that he was like undeniable legend to the club and yeah. did everything won everything like whenever he spoke you're you're gonna listen and um maybe regret not asking him more and learn about his actual career and i was kind of just we were just, was there to do a job and he was a manager yeah. and that was that was that sort of thing and there was so much going on off the field that he had to deal with that oh, yeah. most people probably don't really fully appreciate so um yeah. it was not an easy position to be in and uh yeah, just trying to do the best with the the circumstances at the time. Yeah, there's folk that say he was still phenomenal in training and all that, and he, he was still unbelievably good. I know you used to like to join in in training, but was was he pretty decent? Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> unbelievable player. I wouldn't I wouldn't say he was still unbelievable <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he trained, but <laughs> so we're being honest. But he, he would like to join in, and he could still he could still finish. But in terms of mobility and whatnot i don't think you'll mind me saying that it wasn't <laughs> wasn't getting about the pitch the way you used to but uh, no. i like i feel like technique never leaves and um when we're doing shooting drills in particular like he would yeah like as soon as he spoke he'd listen and taught me a lot about it and um yeah 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 definitely a, definitely so, still so, there yeah 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 i mean there was some some characters that were walking through the door at that point there's one that I, I like to ask about um, Bilal Mojni. Everyone says he was the gentleman. We've had him on before as well, and he, what a cracking guy! But he, he can lose it in an instant. What what, what was he like to, to trade and play alongside Robbie? I, again, probably what you've heard before. Just like extremely nice guy, like kind of one end to the other. You could just <laughs> flip, it in a, uh, flip in an instant. But I personally got on real well with him. Used to go for dinner with him occasionally, and chatted with him well and I like to hear about his career and what he's done and he's, he's pretty um, passionate in his opinions and I was quite interested in his views on what was going on. He's obviously played at a pretty decent level in England and represented this country so he's uh, he's uh, uh, definitely got something about him but at the same time he just had that had that switch in him that he could, he could just lose it and if something didn't sit well with him then he'd let you know and yeah it was just, uh, just definitely a big character. Yeah, but of course, when, when you'd made your debut and you're, you're playing for the first team, and then you had uh, a couple of loan spells. You went to Morton and, and Aloha. What, what was what was that result? Or just to get get game time at that point, Robbie. Pretty much, um, like I said earlier, I was hoping to play in centre mid more often than I did, and I was kind of coming off the bench, playing wide left, wide right, yeah. right back, left back on occasion, even for the reserves at times, kind of not really establishing myself in one position and it was um yeah it was just more for game time as much as anything um played uh league two league one and then it was kind of obvious that i wasn't really going to get too much game time due to the yeah. players that he brought in and chats with the gaffer so um martin became an option and they were full-time local club um 
fighting for promotion from League One and, and thankfully won the league. So it was, again, working under Jim Duffy, who's a really good manager. Um, knew some of the guys from growing up and guys that I played with in the Rangers Youth Academy actually ended up in the first team at Morton. So it was just, just for a few reasons, it, it was a good fit and ended up um, uh, like satisfying the need of, of getting game time and, and a new experience. Yeah, was it pretty frustrating not not to play more? And then, um, do you think that, that the young boys like yourself should have get more of the chance? I know he brought up uh, there was a number of players brought in, uh, experienced players. You're thinking maybe that the youngsters should have get more of a chance. Did you sort of feel like that at that point? That you should have maybe get more of an opportunity. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, personally, I would say that. Just it's yeah. uh, probably biased to say so, but I think uh, a lot would agree. A lot of fans have said as much and, yeah. and uh, would agree, which is nice to hear. But at the same time, you need to appreciate the, the manager's yeah. uh, decision and he would have had his reasons. And if I was playing well enough, then obviously I wouldn't have brought in the guys. You kind of need to take responsibility for yourself. And I always, like say, probably go the other way, be too hard on myself. But um, I always accept responsibility and for whatever reason, wasn't really producing my best on the field as much as I was in training so it was kind of on me to go get that experience elsewhere and then come back and prove that I was ready so um, yeah obviously I would look back and we'd love to have had more games and yeah. um, I'm sure a lot of younger guys would have said the same but at the same time you need to balance that out making 50 appearances for your boyhood club and such a massive club it's, it's yeah. kind of a lot more than a lot of other guys that I played with at the time so you just kind of have to yeah. take the rough with the smooth I guess yeah, yeah, it's a good way of looking at it. So when, yeah. when the time came to, to leave the club, then Robbie, was that a um, how hard was that? Was that a mutual decision, or did, did, did you feel it for the good of your career? You had to had to leave at that point. Um, yeah, it definitely wasn't mutual. It was um, yeah, kind of uh, made clear that I wasn't going to play. War- Warburton yeah. came in. So I had a really good preseason. All the new signings were saying as much, and I felt ready to go and flying, and then came out of nowhere, sent on loan. And when I came back, I still had a year left on my contract, but spoke to Warburton and uh, like he'd put me into the youth team dressing room and whatnot. Kind of made it clear that I wasn't going to be part of the first team plans, and yeah. I just I couldn't afford to sit around in the youth team, not play there either. Just had to get my career moving. Um, and yeah, uh, left with your year left in the contract, and obviously he had left before that year was up. So it's yeah. In hindsight, maybe should have stuck it out, but at the same time, you just never know how it would have played out. And um, cliche that everything happens for a reason. So it's it's um, it was tough at the time, but like I say, kind of made peace with it now and moved on. Yeah, but did did did, did you have any did uh, Warburton speak to you about that about but but leaving? Or I guess you made it clear, like you say, just sticking in the. The youth team dressing them. Yeah, it was kind of mix of a couple of one-on-one chats with them, combined yeah. with like the way he was acting and just his general <laughs> treatment of me. So it was, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. writing was kind of on the wall. And yeah, for again, don't agree with the decision, but that's just yeah. um, learning curve and it's uh, yeah, life's too short to hold oh, grudges and and uh, yeah, you move on. Yeah. So I mean. The move to Iceland, then. Uh, I mean, what what what's, what, what was the, the thinking behind that? That Robbie, I know you had a short spell at Wraith and East Kilbride, but then what was the sort of moment where you felt that I've had enough of Scotland? I'm I'm away somewhere else. Um, it probably was when I was in East Kilbride. It was kind of obviously non-league, and yeah, I'd had a couple of trials in England, and for one reason or another, it just didn't quite pan out, and um, Wraith didn't work out, didn't play at all, and. Like say playing non-league in East Kilbride, I thought it's kind of difficult to build myself up going from there. So I just kind of had to draw a line under and move on and start fresh, completely new. Um, like I said earlier, establish myself in one position. Maybe other Scottish clubs had a perception of me as kind of in and out of the team at Rangers, not really got a position, don't really know where best to use them. And um, like say 15 years at Rangers, it was it was kind of difficult to see where else where else I would go in Scotland. So um, opportunity to go to Iceland came up. They were the champions and played European qualifiers and had Stephen Lennon, ex-Rangers guy there. Yeah. So it was, it was yeah. nice having that connection. And all in all, look back again and, and my two years there is uh, really positive and really beneficial for my career. So 
Yeah, I mean the country. I mean, I, I love, I love going. I've been there a, a few times. Love it. Um, yeah. How do you find it, the country and the way of life and all that? It's, it's a bit different to Scotland, isn't it? Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's different in terms of it's just a much slower pace of life. I think yeah. uh, <laughs> not quite as. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not as intense. But intense is probably a good word. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, but at the same time, football is competitive. Uh, but yeah, nice people, really nice yeah. way of life. And again, when it was my contract was up there, they offered me a new two-year deal, and it would have been quite easy to stay and sort of see out the rest of my career there and led yeah. a pretty pretty happy life. But I just felt, for the sake of my career, it was again it was time to kick on and um, challenge myself elsewhere. And um, yeah, just always been pretty ambitious and set on making the most of of what I got, what I've got. So that yeah. was when. Uh, I didn't actually have any other options. It was just a case of just a bit of a gut feeling, knowing that there was yeah, wow. something better out there. So I just had to move on, and it was pretty difficult to say no. But again, thankfully, it, it paid off and moved to Finland the next year. So a little bit of a step up, and again, really good year for my my career. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you went you went to Finland. You done well there, and then uh, the chance to go to America was that was that was that a similar story in Finland? Did they want you to stay, Robbie, or, or did you feel that you, you're destined for pastures new somewhere else um yeah a little bit of both again they offered me a new deal and i just had that kind of feeling that it was time to move on and yeah we reached two cup finals and played every minute and the manager was leaving and it just felt like the right time and staying on would have wouldn't really benefited me so um again didn't really have anything concrete at all it was just a case of saying no and trusting that something would come up and thankfully a guy that I played with in Iceland was in the USL and in the US and got in touch with him, put me in touch with the coach and came over for a trial and, and that's how it all started in the US. Yeah, wow. And I mean, Charleston Battery, you went, you went there, spent some time there and then uh, where you are now, Monterey Bay. How, how do you find living in, in America? How much are you enjoying it over there? Yeah, loving it. Um, it's just a shame, obviously. Covid hit right as I got here, so it was yeah, a little yeah, bit difficult yeah, to yeah. fully experience the yeah. the way of life. But um, obviously, Covid was was tough for everyone, and it was it could have been a lot worse in terms of location. Charleston's a really really nice city. Weather was great; could get outside and whatnot. And the club treated us really well. Um, yeah, like I say, really nice city, really nice people. Been lucky throughout my whole career; that's been the case. So um, off the field, no issues at all. Yeah. Yeah, spot on. And Monterey Bay, a lovely part of the world as well. Robbie, uh, how you guys? Get, you, you said off air that you're um, you're in the middle. Well, you've played about nine games or something of your season so far. Um, how much are you enjoying your football over there? Yeah, I mean, when I've played, it's been, it's been great. I had a few issues at the start. I had to miss the first three or four games because of visa issues, and then <laughs> I was suspended a couple of times for a couple of silly red cards. So it's been <laughs> quite a stop start. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, so it's dear. honestly it's been pretty frustrating, but at the same time, I know there's a lot of good players in the squad, and we had a rough start. We were seven games, like the first seven games were away, so it was pretty difficult to pick up points. But we won through the last four now, home game on Saturday, and momentum's definitely building. And got a really good coach and Frank Gallup, who's um, you know played in the Premiership as a player, coached the yeah. national team, and and coached the MLS. So he's really really good cv really good guy and get on well with him and can learn a lot from him so it's um yeah. it's been it's been a lot of positives despite the frustrations with the the yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Jesus and whatnot yeah see, see in terms of the traveling all that speak to guys that play in america and they say the traveling is unbelievable like a local derby can be like four thousand miles away what's it like with you guys is it is it a lot of traveling involved yeah, yeah, it's a lot of travelling. I mean, you kind of have to laugh when you hear guys on a three-hour bus journey back home now. <laughs> yeah. I used to be the same, complain about it, but now that's, <laughs> that's nothing. Um, if we play on a Saturday, for example, we usually fly early on the Friday morning to whether it's a couple hours to Phoenix or uh, LA or uh, where else do we play? New Mexico, a lot of games in Texas on the East Coast. Yeah. Obviously, it was up to New York. Uh, but yeah, fly on the Friday train once we get there stay overnight in the hotel game saturday night and then fly back sunday and then do it all again the the following week so that's kind of what a typical away game looks like yeah yeah, yeah. incredible yeah. And, i mean i mean 
in terms of your future, you're one that sort of moved about. Um, can you see yourself maybe perhaps coming back to the UK or Scotland in, in, in the near future, or um, do you look that far ahead? Uh, I try not to. I try to just do my best as it yeah. in the moment, and whatever comes comes. That's kind of been my philosophy. Um, definitely wouldn't close the door t- if the opportunity felt right. Um, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Just personal life. Got a American fiance yeah. and baby awesome. on the way, so I don't feel like <laughs> moving yeah. anytime soon is the way to go. But um, like I say, feel fit. Feel like I've got a lot of years left in me, and you never know what what can happen. So. Uh, yeah, pretty open-minded to, to whatever, but in the near future, I'm really happy where I am. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What happens, yeah, brilliant. And yep. In terms of, of Rangers, do you keep an eye on, on, on how they're getting on, Robbie, from, from where you are? Absolutely, yeah. Um, cup final was at 12 in the afternoon for me here, so it was just with the time change. So it was, uh, it was nice. It was a bit of a strange experience, but... Um, uh, yeah, Europa League final, yeah. Yeah, the Europa League, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, no, definitely keep in touch and keep an eye on what's going on and transfers and general news of the club. And obviously, yeah. it's been a rough time with everyone with first Jimmy Bell, uh, Walter Smith, sorry, and then Jimmy Bell. Oh, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, thankfully, the cup final was a little glimmer of hope for everyone. And yeah. yeah, I don't think they can have any regrets from how it went. It's, it was just one of those nights, and penalties can go either way. So, yeah, uh, yeah definitely an eventful year for the, for the club, but it's, uh, yeah. I think it's in a good place. Yeah, did, did you have any uh, what any sort of memories at uh, Jimmy? Um, the boys I speak to get s- s- some uh, crazy tales that they tell me the times at Jimmy. But he was he was a proper Rangers man, drove the standards and all that. But yeah. uh, you, ha- you had to get to the home really to, to to understand them. How how did you find them? Yeah, yeah, like I say, reading the testimonies and uh, yeah. what everyone says is, is really accurate. I mean, everyone that's ever been around the club will know exactly what he's like and he's uh he's definitely and kind of rough exterior but yeah. i think he just like said set the standards and knew what it took to for the club to be successful um and yeah once you'd proven yourself to him and he knew that you were there for the right reasons and had the club's best interest and he would do anything for you and that was definitely my uh, experience with him, he was pretty hard on the young yeah. guys coming in, and you had to you had to buy him chocolate to let. <laughs> once you moved into the first <laughs> team, that was his little uh, your little token gesture to uh, to get in there to get your locker. Um, and then, yeah, he was he was honestly he was great with me. He would just give me a lot of stick for for this and that, but you you always accepted it because you knew deep down he was he was doing it for your best best interest. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Excellent. Well, Robbie, we wish you all the best uh, going forward with, with, with Monterey Bay. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on, on how you're getting on. So uh, thanks very much for, for joining us. I really appreciate it. No, thanks a lot for having me on. Appreciate it.